Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County's Marine Environmental Learning Center presents an introduction to special programs in aquaculture training. Hi, I'm Chris Smith. I'm Marine Program Director for Cornell Cooperative Extension's Marine Division in Suffolk County. We started at this site at Cedar Beach in Southold in 1986 with two people, and we've since grown to 43 people in four locations throughout the county. One of the underlying themes of our program has been the restoration and maintenance of shellfish populations throughout the east end of Long Island. And to that end, we've always operated a hatchery here that has grown clams, uh, oysters, and scallops. Uh, one of the exciting new projects we have going this year is the special projects in aquaculture training, where we're actually bringing in from the surrounding community people from all walks of life to help us in this mission of restoring and preserving shellfish beds. What follows is a report on exactly how we're going about doing that and be hosted by our shellfish manager, Kim Tetro. The Marine Center is located in the town of Southold on a peninsula called Great Hog Neck on the North Fork of Long Island. The Marine Center is also situated at the heart of the Peconic Estuary System. The system has been listed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as an estuary of national significance. In 1985, when a brown tide was discovered in the Peconic Estuary, people came out of the woodwork in an effort to reduce its impact on the shellfish economy. One effort that grew out of this phenomenon was a shellfish hatchery located at the Marine Center and established as a means to help shellfish come back to the Peconic Estuary. For many years, the hatchery was contracted exclusively by Southold Town to provide enhancement efforts in partnership with Cornell. The SPAT program came about to introduce the community to the town's endeavors towards shellfish enhancement with the hopes of increasing productivity in the town's creeks. Kim Tetro, Cornell's hatchery manager, explains. SPAT started out as being the Southold project in aquaculture training, and the reason that we, we approached it this way was because the South Hole Town Board and the trustees have always been very supportive of Cornell and of the shellfish hatchery. And they've also been very concerned about seed plantings in, in local waters. I think it's wonderful. You know, in, in South Hole, because preservation is foremost in our mind, uh, we look in all directions to do as much as we can. And working with Cornell has been, an, an, been a, a distinct pleasure. Uh, when they started the program down at Cedar Beach, uh, we became involved immediately because it was a good thing to not only be working with the Cornell Cooperative Extension, but also for uh, the bays and people so they can get a mess of clams, scallops, or oysters. So uh, we're delighted. The culmination of years of seed planting we decided to up the antes a little bit and include the community at large to become involved in every aspect of what we do at Cornell for the town. And so Southhold Project in Aquaculture Training uh, sets itself up to open up the entire community to all user groups to come into the hatchery and to do this training initiative. And the reason why uh, it was so immediately available is because the Southold trustees and town board were ready to come on board with this program. What I think is so great about the program, it's a hands-on for the residents. And I know the first night, I think they had well over 100 uh, appear, and, and I believe it's, uh, they've had more than that. Uh, it's, it's just a huge success because People can relate to what they're doing as far as the, uh, you know, the, the growing. I have to tell you, I was down, for those that have never been down, uh, down to uh, Cedar Beach, you really should make it one of your stops this summer, be it by yourself or with your grandchildren. It's absolutely amazing. The last time I was down there, 
and I love all of it. Um, there was a clam spawning, the little seed. I was born and raised in this area, and, and, and we clammed, and we went scalloping, and we did all the good things, and, and um, to see a clam produce its seed and spit it all out is the most fantastic thing you've ever seen. So I just happened to be there at the right time. But you really should go down and see what a wonderful job this is. And this program fits into what's happening there. Again, one of the reasons why we are starting this venture in Southhold and with Cornell and, and all the powers that be is we have a unique uh, spot, of a unique waterway at Cedar Beach. And it, it really is a county facility. Uh, our, our facility is on county property. And the waterways uh, were actually man-made. They were dredged and they form finger canals. And so we've decided that those canals and all the waterways surrounding Cornell are now closed for commercial and recreational fishing. And they become the community test garden. And within that garden, we can really partition out physically any area we want and perform a project. So if we have a nice sandy area that we want to plant a half a million clams on, and we're going to actively watch over that like a garden, the whole community. We, div we divvy up the workforce and say, okay, on this week, this group will come in and tend predator netting that's over it. And this group will come in and tend all the crab traps around it. And this group will come in and do some subsampling and take some measurements. And that's just one little clam pot. Now you could have scallops running on a long line down the center, oysters in cages. Any configuration that we choose, we can experiment with. And the reason why we haven't done it in the past is it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of teamwork. It takes a lot of people that want to do this on a consistent basis. So the thought is, instead of Cornell doing it exclusively in-house, let's let everybody have a piece of the action. And they're going to keep the energy level going to make these programs work. And the ultimate goal, the very most ultimate goal, is to increase survival of the seed that we produce at Cornell so that once the whole system is working to its optimal, we can start taking the seed out and relaying it into Town Creek. What the SPAT program is, it's a multifaceted approach to restore the Peconic Bay system. The format of the program is one where we start initially with formalized training. And so, once the community responded to their want to do this, we offer up on a, on a monthly basis a, a workshop. And in truth, the first workshop was so popular that we had to switch from a once a month workshop to right now it's three times a, uh, three times a month. We train the participants in one aspect of aquaculture. The first workshop was algae culture. The second workshop is spawning and conditioning of broodstock. And it sounds technical, but that's the point, is to get everybody together and learn a new language and, and learn new ideas and then break it down into layman's terms and then let people try their concepts out. So that's the workshop series. The, the next component is the community test garden. That allows all participants to come together as a group and test the new training out in the field with professionals as a guide. The next component is what we call the Master Shellfish Gardener. And now the Master Shellfish Gardener goes the one step and says, I want an individual garden that I'm going to tend to perfection. They know as part of the training that what they're doing has a, 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 a multiple gain for the community. 
Uh, the gains are water quality issues, shellfish enhancement issues, uh, recreational issues, educational issues. Once we've established some of the ground rules and the protocols that it takes for the community to come out and do the work that's necessary, we can take the concept and we can move it to any other creek that the town wants to, to move into. Uh, the thought is to run the program at Cornell, prove its efficiency, and then target satellite creeks within the town. Uh, right here we're at Goose Creek and we run our scallops on Goose Creek and have for numerous years. And this would be an area that could be very conducive to a community satellite creek. Uh, there's access to the creek, there's good uh, visibility from the road, so there's a, a, a community watchdog uh, effect. Uh, the, the water is, is perfect for, for aquaculture. And it's, it's an area that is small enough that it really doesn't take away from any user group. And so these are the kind of uh, ground rules that we'd want for satellite creeks within South Hole Town. Once we establish satellite creeks within the town, we can get more community effort. People that are in the surrounding area of that creek can now have a place to come to, to, to work with, again, with Cornell supervision and through the jurisdiction of, of the town and the trustees. Then once we start to uh, develop a good baseline of information of, of our success rate, we can expand this model that we're creating, bring the model to other townships, and then prove to them that this is a very efficient approach to enhancement within the town. And once that happens, there's no limit to where you can take the model. It, it could go global. It could go to developing nations, the same concept. And it's not really a new concept, per se, but the approach that we're taking is a relatively new one, to show the community where they play an important role. And, and they empower themselves with the knowledge and the appreciation of being good stewards of the environment. One of the user groups that is starting to use the Cornell facility to a greater extent are the local schools and the teachers uh, in not just the science and biology departments, but in other departments that are seeing that shellfish aquaculture is a, such a diverse and multifaceted approach to so many different uh, aspects of what they're teaching in their curriculum. Uh, schools are starting to uh, secure places uh, during the week for school field trips, uh, for tours, for active training components that they are incorporating, again, things that they're learning in the classroom but that they don't have the tools for. Uh, so they can come here and they can learn cell biology, they can learn life cycles, food chain, uh, they can learn math, volumetric subsamplings. The, the possibilities are really only limited by what the concept is that they're trying to teach. And what we're trying to do here with the uh, SPAT program as uh, a component of school involvement is to really help the teachers uh, understand some of the potentials that this facility has to offer in supplementing their own teaching method and uh, the concepts that they're trying to get across to, to the students. Uh, another component that we offer at, at the Marine Center as part of the special programs in aquaculture training is the internship program, which allows school groups to offer uh, students the chance to perform internships here in the hatchery. Jonathan Palestina, a junior at Mattatuck High School, also known as JP, was involved in the summer youth training program 
which is another aspect of the SPAT program. Jonathan enjoyed it so much that he went on to become an intern at the hatchery. Here is Jonathan this summer. I'm a senior next year, so thought I'd take this course for some, just like because I was interested in it. We, I came on a field trip here in school and heard about this camp, and I just thought I'd be interested in it, and so I joined it. Well, Kim said that when we left here, we'd have the basic know-how to uh, culture shellfish and stuff like that. I think I pretty much do. The only thing that I would need is all the equipment, which i uh, not going to have many things like that anytime soon. But this is like, I'm interested in this like part of marine biology, and this is, I don't know, I think this is what I want to do, but I'm not sure yet. Here is Jonathan today. First went, I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I don't know if I'm going to stay with it. And then the more and more, like, actually that I've stayed and with the more I learned, the more I became interested in it and I wanted to go. And after the week was up, I, it was kind of depressing. Like, I wanted to go again, like, the next week, even if it was, like, I don't know, two days a week. I don't know, I, just, I missed it. There's something for everybody here. And that's the best way that I can explain it. I mean, if you like to work with your hands and build stuff, then there's a place for you here. If you like to work in the algae room and work on culturing different kinds of algae, then there's something for you here. If you like going out on boats and being out on the water all the time, we got that too. I mean, it's it's just such a broad like area of expertise. Like it's just I, I got the best out of different kinds of areas. I enjoyed it, like every part of it. I mean, some parts, maybe not like cleaning and stuff like that, but nobody likes that stuff. But it's just, there's something for everyone here. But I think my favorite part is being able to look at the finished product, which scallop seedling, whatever, pick it up and you know hold it in your hand and just say like tell people see that I made that that was my favorite part so this is the newest batch of interns coming into the uh, the hatchery and they're just gonna give you some quick insight as to what might have brought them here uh, what they expect to get out of the internship and what they might do with it later on in the, in the school year as far as projects or whatnot. So let them introduce themselves and, and just talk a little bit to the camera here. Go ahead, guys. All right, my name's Brian. Um, what brought me here? Uh, I guess I was interested in uh, doing something with active science because I like biology. And uh, I don't know, I thought it would be fun, like, at least with these guys. Um, hi, my name is Olga. Uh, basically, my marine pool program started in, with Mr. Brackley. He's my teacher in marine class, and I started doing internship in uh, Atlantic Marine Board in Riverhead. And uh, they also have the Cornell Crop Extension program, so I heard that they have a really good internship in here to work actually on the clams, not doing just educational programs. So I'm looking forward, and uh, I hope I will learn a lot. It's a lot of fun though. I'm Stephanie and I wanted to intern here from Marine Bio in school with Mr. Rockline, my Olga, and he mentioned it because some other kids from my have done it, so it looks pretty interesting and you know, Bio is a good class, he's a good teacher, and so I thought it would be a little fun experience. Uh, hey, I'm John. I've always been interested in marine bio, so I thought, what better place to try it than here? So I decided to start interning here. Well, uh, I got a B on my term paper. I, am, I got accepted to Coastal Carolina University. I'll be going there this fall semester. Um, I got all kinds of doors opened up for me that I wouldn't have if I never came. Juniors in high school coming in for an internship 
have been given the ability to not just learn the field on a hands-on uh, approach, but we've upped the antes uh, on what they're expected. We found that these students have followed through in their, uh, in their interests and are getting into the colleges of their choice. And that's really, to me, a, a phenomenal success for them. For me, it's a success. For them, I can just see in their eyes when they walk in the door what they're getting out of this program. Along with the internship program, there is the summer youth training program. Children from all over Long Island attended this training program, and they learned about aquaculture and had a little fun. I'm glad I know it, you know, what we've learned. I guess it can be helpful. Some of it, you know, you can use some of it. You don't even have to use it here. Some of it just helps you, you know, in your life. I just love, like, the water and all, like, the little animals in it, like scallops and clams and crabs. Came out a way of making it fun, so. Kim says it's not high tech, it's usable tech. So it's really pretty easy stuff to, to comprehend. It's not that difficult to use. Well, I've learned how they grow oysters and clams here, and I'm even thinking about trying it myself. Uh, well, I didn't know much about oysters, clams, scallops. Now, I know how they grow and how they um, change from larvae and how you feed them. Uh, another component of the special programs in aquaculture training is the assistance for industry. Uh, aquaculture is a very underutilized industry in Long Island and a lot of the again the ground rules and the mechanisms for industry are just coming uh, to light and people are starting to through their training that we're offering whether on a community basis or whatnot they're starting to say well I'm interested in going the next step I'm interested in, in uh, making a, a bit of a livelihood from this. And I might not quit my day job, but I, I'd like to try this. Some people are saying, this looks like a very good way of making some money on a, on a full industry scale. We offer the helping hand through either training or through technical assistance to, to make this new fledgling industry on Long Island which used to be a, a, a historically very lucrative industry, uh, make the new form, the shift that's happened in aquaculture, make that a reality for, for these newcomers. So now what we have here is a project that incorporates so many different facets of aquaculture. Community, school groups, students, industry, really all user groups for our environment based on the simple act of growing shellfish. We've, we've now brought into the picture water quality issues, uh, enhancement issues, industry issues, educational issues, and it's all done in a nice, neat packet. And the beauty is that all the user groups understand what the packet is and where they fit in to, to the, the scheme of things. They understand where they lie as a critical uh, element to make it a success. And it will be all of their mutual assistantship, partnerships, good stewardship that will make this program work here in Southold, in other townships, and possibly anywhere else that people are interested in bringing this form of training to their community.